Dear friends, as we can worship, I hope to stand and face the cross. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and you send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our gathering hymn, seven, uh, 373, Christ the Lord is risen today.
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. eternal and all-merciful God. With all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings of the day. A reading from Acts, the ninth chapter. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, 
Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At that moment, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief peace to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
A reading from the Revelation to John, the fifth chapter. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and that all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Son of John, do you love me? 
Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. By your word, O oh God, your creation sprang forth, and we were given the breath of life. By your word, eternal God, death is overcome, Christ is raised from the tomb, and we are given a new life in the power of your spirit. May we boldly proclaim this good news by the words of our mouths and the deeds of our lives, rejoicing always in your powerful presence through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Though there were 153 fish in the net, the net did not break. I have no idea. Well, I have guesses. It seems a small detail in this appearance of the resurrected Jesus, but the smallness of it catches my attention. It seems odd to bother. Now it's been suggested that the number 153 was significant in the time this gospel was written, whether it was thought to be perhaps the number of types of fish that were believed to exist, one fish for each type of fish, that's represented all fish, or whether it was the number of communities of disciples known to the author. There are this many churches in the world, so I'm going to list all of them in this 153. Or, who knows, maybe it was the number of people who gathered in the community for which the gospel was originally written. We don't know. But what is clear is that everyone agrees this sign suggests that Jesus and his disciples are sent out out to every human being, out to every time and place, and yet all who are gathered are gathered into one in the risen Christ. The net is not torn, despite the amount of fish within it. The irony is enhanced, of course, because the disciples had no fish at all before they cast the net where Jesus told them to. The net is not itself what makes the gathering of those who are loved by God. It's not the net that makes the gathering. It's not the fish. It's not the workers. It's Jesus. It's Jesus whose presence makes the net, the workers, the fish come together. It is Jesus who is essential to the work of fishing for people. There is no community in Christ without Christ. And in order to love Jesus, as he makes quite clear to Simon, son of John, we must love the people who are gathered to, into him. We must love the fish in the net. The people scattered across the globe in Christian communities. The whole host who we hear singing praise in our reading from the Revelation to John. These are the people of God in Jesus Christ. And to love Jesus is to feed 
and tend them. Paul, in our reading from Acts, has to learn this same lesson. Perhaps he sounds a little bit more familiar than all of these arcane metaphors and symbols. We understand what it is to be a religious or civil official like this. Paul's been going about and making decisions about which fish get to stay in the net and what threatens the breaking. He's deciding who the sheep and the goats are. He has been distinguishing between right and wrong worship and right and wrong speech. This is not theoretical work. He is persecuting the community. Lives and families and communities are being severed apart because of his actions, because of his inability to perceive God as being for the people, not against them. Ultimately, his vision has been that he must protect the net, protect the flock, protect the religious community. And ironically, this idea that we human beings ought to protect God's project is the very project that destroys God's people. So Jesus shocks Paul, who is still being called Saul, into a faith he could never have imagined. Jesus catches Simon, Peter, and the rest, pulling them off their boats, perhaps again and for the first time. He pulls them into a life of tending the community that Jesus has gathered. The risen Jesus in both places is revealing an unprecedented, unimagined scope for his people and his reign. We tend to call it the church. But in the Greek, it is ecclesia, the gathering, the call, the people who have been brought together. The net brings the fish together despite their number and variety, and the net does not break. And Jesus is revealing that this call, this community, is for everyone, everywhere. Everyone, everywhere. As we read in the Revelation, quote, every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, everyone. Everything, every time, everywhere. This revelation should shock and shake us, overwhelm and confuse us. It's beyond our ability, it's beyond our lives, it's beyond ourselves, it's beyond our experience, it's beyond our little gathering here today. Jesus is great enough to call and catch the entirety of existence into this one worship, this one prayer, this one joy, this one feast, this one life that we call church. And because it is for everyone, everywhere, the mission of the Jesus movement is never finished and never ours alone. No net that does not reach to the very ends of creation is wide enough. No call that does not speak to the poor and oppressed is adequate. No word that does not heal division, bring justice, and mean the tragedy of our inhumanity to each other will be truthful. The call of Jesus must name the truth of discrimination and evil. It must call us beyond them, together. This is for everyone, everywhere. The movement to end prejudice, racism, sexism, transphobia, homophobia, religious persecution, poverty, and war. It's not just for one group or another over against another. It's for everyone, everywhere. The movement to learn love so that our actions speak that love of Jesus into all those who belong to him. The movement to tend to the lambs, the flock, the sheep of Jesus for everyone, everywhere. This is a movement that will use any and every tool not for itself, not to pay bills, not to keep an organizational structure, not to run the church, not to meet our needs, not to take care of us, note that we use the term us there. No, this movement has no limits, no boundary, no end. It will go beyond everything and every possible boundary to love Jesus Christ by tending, feeding, and loving everyone, everywhere, everyone. Everywhere. Ukraine and its refugees and the Russian forces destroying their lives. Disarm the one with love and trust 
and you will find food and shelter for the other. Everyone, everywhere. The African American community and the white privileged people trapped together in a system of ancestral design. Give generosity and courage to the one, courage to confront privilege and hatred and fear, and you will enrich and unleash the wisdom and witness of those who have long been silenced. Everyone, everywhere, yes, the Christian and the Jew and the Muslim and the Buddhist and the Hindu and the Sikh and the atheist liberated from tribalism, liberated into the cosmic love of the God who is for every one of us, not against us. Everyone, everywhere, and nothing less is and must be our mission because it is God's love which drives us and Christ's cross that saves us and they are for everyone, everywhere, for everyone, everywhere. Jesus died and rose from the dead. This much you probably should have learned as a child in the church. But what else has Jesus done? And who is it for? The church, the sacraments, the justice of God, the peace of Christ, the joy of the resurrection, the hope of the eternal life, the faith that we find in the cross, the love of the one who washes our feet. These are also for everyone, everywhere. The whole call of God in Christ Jesus for everyone, everywhere, the unbroken net and the work of the fishers, and the breakfast meal provided by Jesus on the shore of the sea for everyone, everywhere. The worship of all the universe gathered into one in the Holy Spirit around the throne of the Lamb who was dead and now lives and never dies again. This is also for everyone, everywhere. The testimony of each and every person belonging to Jesus, limited to their friends and family, perhaps, or on the grandest scale, made with Paul before nations and rulers and all the peoples of the world. Nevertheless, each and all, for everyone, everywhere, the feeding and the tending that is rooted in this love of Jesus Christ that is given to Simon Peter is given also to us to do for everyone, for everywhere. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting for everyone, everywhere. The message of good news to the poor, the good news that topples the proud from their thrones is for everyone, everywhere. The waters of baptism that unite us as one people with one Lord, one faith, and one spirit for everyone, everywhere. The community formed in love where the greatest are the servants, where we wash each other's feet, where we share each other's burdens, where our project is not protection of ourselves, but the giving of ourselves to others. It's all for everyone, everywhere. All of it, given in the risen Jesus, is for everyone, everywhere. So that we also, together, may see the Lord on the shore of the sea. So that we also may say to each other in assembly, it is the Lord. And so that we may all be gathered after a long night of empty nets by this one who fills everything, everyone, everywhere, and says now to us, come have breakfast. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Work through our bishops, Elizabeth and Tracy, our dean, Matthew, our pastor, and our council, that we may proclaim the good news faithfully, sustain all the baptized and increase their faith, especially the people of Good Shepherd in Weehawken, St. Paul in Edison, St. Matthew in Moorestown, Holy Trinity in Wildwood, the Indiana Kentucky Synod, and the Protestant Christian Batak Church in Indonesia, that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help, especially Jennifer, Deacon Bob, Jim, Catherine, Jamie, Marianne, Lynn, Jean, Matt, Richard, Leah, Becky, Sarah, Peter, Matt, Bruce, Bob, Nancy, Stephen, Mark, and Bonnie. Grant an end to oppression, war, and violent conflicts in the Ukraine, Iran, India, Pakistan, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, China, Taiwan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, South Sudan, Libya, Mexico, Myanmar, Nigeria, the Central African Republic, Turkey, Israel, Palestine, Vietnam, the Philippines, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Pakistan, Somalia, Mali, and the United States of America. Turn their mourning into dancing and clothe them with joy and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. God, in your mercy. There are there are are Be present to the faithful ones who are persecuted for you, especially the church in Burma, China, Eritrea, India, Iran, Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Afghanistan, Algeria, Azerbaijan, Bahrain, the Central African Republic, Cuba, Egypt, Indonesia, Iraq, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Sudan, Turkey, and Vietnam. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy. Join our voices with angels, preachers, Ellen, John, Fred, Otto, Tom, Philip, and James the Apostles, Athanasius of Alexandria, Monica, the mother of Augustine, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also Amen. with you. I invite you to share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Dear friends, I invite you to be seated, and as the table is made ready, a brief word about stewardship. 
As you know, we require all the gifts that you have to give for the ministry of this congregation. So if you have brought a gift today and you do not know where to distribute it, please speak with me or any member of council. If you wish to make a financial gift, you may do so through the chest in the rear of the name, mailing us a check, or using Banco either through the app or speaking with Todd Lutman to arrange direct deposit. As you know, this coming week is Synod Assembly. That will be Friday and Saturday. So I beg your participation and your prayers for the Synod as we do our important work together. I also beg your prayers for the Ministry of Trinity Church, which is our neighbor across the park, where the institution of Father Chase, who has been there for some years now, but the official institution uh, of his ministry will begin there today. And that will be celebrated at 1 p.m. today at Trinity Church. Please remember that we have fellowship after worship, thanks to Diane Brockle and her husband Don, and that's in the rear of the nave, uh, just up the stairs, and in the parish hall. If you would like to know anything else about how you can aid our ministry, please speak with me. I'd be happy to talk with you anytime. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the Lord's Supper as we sing our hymn, 729, The Church of Christ in Every Age. It is indeed right, God. 
glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to all eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, heaven angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending
Oh, pray. 
Dear friends, I wish to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, deify your spirit in love, sanctify your body in service, nourish your mind in wonder, and preserve your being in everlasting life. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us forth from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, I've already mentioned most of the announcements necessary today. There is a Christian education meeting tomorrow at, I believe, 5.30. Let me know if you wish to attend. That will be in person here. As I said, this fellowship in the rear of the nave, uh, the parish hall, thanks to the prophets. So please attend with us there if you are able and call. If you have any questions or any needs, please let me know. Are there other announcements for the good of the community? Hearing none, I invite you to bow your heads and to receive the blessing of God. Almighty God, who has given you the privilege of sharing the loving, healing, reconciling mission of Jesus Christ our Lord, give you the Holy Spirit to make you wise, the Holy Spirit to guide you, the Holy Spirit to renew you, the Holy Spirit to strengthen you, so that you will be strong in faith, discerning in proclamation, courageous in witness, and persistent in good deeds, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn in 384, that Easter day with joy was bright. Thanks be to God.